thank you all so much for joining today. Rachel is going to be taking us through her carving process for her Rise Up number 29 spoon template. And we have Kevin, who's going to also be going through the entire process end to end <laughs> to be able to try and replicate Rachel's technique. So Rachel and Kevin, if you want to just say a couple of words and then we can get started. Okay. So this is uh, not quite following on from the axing demo or walkthrough. Uh, so these blanks that we've got now are ones that we created or they're not actually, but they're similar to the ones we created last week. Um, and so they're just a standard blank and we're gonna, we're gonna see what happens. So the caveat is that this isn't an instructional um, video. So I'm gonna assume that Kevin knows about knife safety and he's gonna, he's gonna just be able to <laughs> copy some grips. Um, so please, please, uh, yeah, don't do that, Colin. <laughs> if you lose a finger, it's, it's please, it's not our fault. Yeah, so it's more about process than about technique, I would say. And we'll see how it goes. Brilliant. I'm assuming last video that I knew stuff about act safety, because there sure was a lot of advice. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I put the caveat at the beginning, so I was feeling a little bit more sensitive about it. Ah, uh, okay, fair enough. Some of the advice seemed a little needed based what? on results <laughs> what? of the day. There were, there were no self-fulfilling prophecies in that video. <laughs> I'm Kevin. I'm helping Rachel out, and I'm having a ball doing it myself. It's like getting some private instruction from Rachel, which is awesome for me because it's fun to learn someone doing things. I, I've grown up in Maryland, which is the Sloyd capital of the U.S., so of course I'm steeped in that tradition. So it's fun for me to get a taste of someone else's way of doing things. And Rachel carves such beautiful spoons and is such a great part of the Rise Up community. So this is great fun for me. And thank you to Kaylin for helping be the technical yeah. coordinator. Yeah, do you, think, do you think Ron might be able to write notes if he needs any? Oh, that's right. Who's the documentarian? <laughs> a lot of responsibility okay. for a Saturday morning. I don't know if I'm up for it. <laughs> Oh, maybe the, maybe you could you could do it alongside Craig, and you can see who gets the best gems. We should Craig point out due to inter, we should point out due to international oddities and time zones. It's six a.m. where Caleb is, so yes. she gets the uh, award for best trooper for <laughs> earliest riser. I will uh, I will uh, endeavor to write down some notes if you guys say anything clever. That's pretty unlikely, but it could happen. I guess. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Ron. I have these three blanks that I axed out watching Rachel teach me how to ax. I was watching myself. So these should be blank axed to the sort of normal Rachel specifications. And Kevin, are any of those dolphin or did you do three of the, because we have I, two different profiles that Rachel provided during the ax. I tried to keep a dolphin-ish, can you see here? Yep. Maybe this one's easier. I tried, sorry, Kaylin, I tried to keep a dolphin-ish pump on all of them because that's something I really want to cool. achieve. Yeah. I, I tried to as well but I didn't achieve it. So it's got a bit of it'll be fine. So I'm choosing the the one that I think of it's got the straightest grain whereas the others okay this one's got a bit of a kink down the down the bottom of the handle. I will also choose the straightest grain. Okay so my process starts with um carving the three planes. So for my first action will be to carve um, down the side, round the sides. So just do your normal thing, Kevin. We want to carve down to that line. I'm not really worried about the line. What I'm worried about is making sure I get under any ax marks. So I'm not really concerning myself getting exactly to the line. If I go over to get under max ax marks, then that's absolutely fine. And I'm going to do both sides before I come around the neck, just because it means that I don't have to reposition. And this is just a cleaning up. You're just getting the X this marks off. Cleaning up. We're not so I'm not. I'm really not worried about anything other than making sure it's good wood underneath the underneath the knife. So if there are any sneaky problems with the blank. This is what I want to find it out in this first batch of carding. 
so I can put it in the firewood pile straight away. So I have a place where my stop cut is a little bit deep. I'm just gonna kind of carve that spot to get under the stop cut. Yeah. And you're paying particular attention that all right, around the, um, this place where if you're gonna have some um, axe blows that you didn't spot, you're paying particular attention there just to make sure there's nothing that, that's gonna cause a problem later on. But I'd much prefer to find that now. Yeah. And this doesn't look very clean. And I'm happy to leave it like that because these are knife marks rather than axe marks. Mm -hmm. uh, so I know that it's good wood underneath. Yeah, and your wood's got a really nice shine to it as you're carving, Rachel. Uh, I think I remember you saying that you kind of carve from start to finish in one go. You don't carve yeah. really wet wood, let it dry, and go back for finishing cuts. It seems like it's aged nicely. Yeah, so this, this wood's cherry, mm -hmm. and um, I think it's about eight months old, so not all of that, all that not, not as old as uh, Kevin's, but it feels like, as you say, you can see by the look of it that it's it's gonna, it's gonna come in all right. Gonna so I'm just cleaning up the, the. So I'm just cleaning up the sides of the handle right now, right? Because I have some pretty sharp ledges where the bowl comes down the shoulder. Are we leaving that for now? Sorry, right. clean up the shoulders too. She was. She yeah. So I've come down the handles. I'm sorry. I did, yeah, and I've I've come in the shoulder. Okay. Now. This bit, and I'm just going to do the top of the bowl. What are you doing the top of the bowl? Let's see. I'm not doing anything. I'm I'm so I'm not the rim, the whole it. top. You're flat, yeah. not the whole top. Sorry, yeah, the edges. And I don't know whether you remember when we asked this. Uh you said, Kevin, you know, is this going to be safe putting this bump cut pressure? on this thin tip. Yeah. So this is the time we're just gonna have a look at that thin tip and make sure that there's nothing. As we clean up with the knife, we'll be able to see if there's any hidden cracks. And again, that's mine, when we're gonna- Mine actually has something interesting going on there that I've been watching on this blank. It's got a spot that might be color that I think, I constantly worry that it's a crack. Mm. but it might just be a color line. So I want to carve it and then look at it more closely. Mm -hmm. I think that's a really important thing to talk about is that's what I'm predominantly doing in this first cut through is not worrying about the surface finish. I'm, I'm inspecting the wood on all, on all those places. <clears throat> Have you gone around can you all see, the Yeah. Can, can you see that bit of color next to my marker line that looks like a crack? I'm smoothing out the rim here. I'm gonna look at it more closely in a minute. I carved a little bit of bowl to get okay. underneath of it. And I was doing that test where <clears throat> you carve along what you think is a, cra a crack and you see if the wood splits right on the crack and it didn't. Mm -hmm. Okay. But that was yesterday. So it, the crack might've opened up in the fridge overnight. So I'm, cu I'm really curious to get there. So have you gone around all of the edge now? When I go around the edge of the bowl, it's the same kind of thing, right? I'm not, I'm not trying to make it round. I'm just trying to clean it up. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm carving away my sharpie lines, the, uh, the cross hatches. Are they going to be important again? Nope. You're going to redraw. So he's on the top face, still, isn't he? So I'm gonna. Was I not um, supposed to be on the top face? No, she did not go around the outside of the bowl. <laughs> well, there's the... So after I've gone around the side, mm -hmm. I'm going to do the top face next. Um, oh. And if you have a look there, you can see that this is my pretty poor axe work. Mm -hmm. uh, so I want to get right underneath there. And at this point, I am pretty much establishing my finished crank mostly in the bowl. Mm -hmm. uh, so I want to dig as deep as possible to accentuate that, that crank with these cuts. So I come, and I'm not coming right across the, the whole of the bowl, I'm just concentrating on the edge. Mm -hmm. oh, sorry, I'm gonna sit you. Um, coming okay, so down. So this is what you're doing, you're doing the part yeah. that I call the rim now. 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. But the bowl shape is still wonky, right? That's right. Okay. It's near, but it's not vinyl. But this is getting underneath the axe marks, but also predominantly establishing how the bowl is going to look. Okay, I've cleaned up, I think, the entire vertical wall around the perimeter. Beauty. There we right. go. The entire vertical and wall around the perimeter of the spoon. And you've started There's a bit some stuff of here, the, but those um, are from. Yeah. But the. Uh, everything is still wonky at this point, but I can tell there's no like heartbreaking cracks or shit or. Good. Weird wavy grain or anything. I'm going to have to shift position. I always when I'm doing the. Um, the top of the bowl, can you see it there? I always wedge it on my knee and I haven't got enough grip to do it otherwise. So um, that's that's really wedged into my, my knee to give myself something to cut against. The really important thing on the top face is what I'm doing is making sure that this face lines up with this face. Mm -hmm. That is, and, and if possible, lines up with the deep, deepest point of the crank. So this is where I spend my time is making sure all of these lines are parallel to each other. Mm -hmm. Parallel to each other. And this was cleaning up the cleaning up the rim here. I too had a pretty severe ledge here from the axe. That original stop cut still has some. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I prefer to save time with the axe and not get that really squeaky clean because I'm going to have to come over it with an eye. Now I'm spending a bit more time on this side here because it's it's higher than the other parallel planes, the, the deepest part of the crank and the end of the, the handle. So I'm just pulling that down a bit. So should I try to get rid of that stop cut mark now on the whole yeah. face of the bowl you want or to get just under that. the rim? And not, not in the whole bowl, just on the, just on the uh, edges, just on the rim. Okay. And so after I've done the bowl and the crank, I'm coming up the handle, making sure I don't cut off any remaining dolphin hump. Mm -hmm. I am, it seems like I'm exaggerating the dolphin hump by Good. getting under that, by getting under that um, stop cut. One of the problems you can have is if you haven't got this line um, perpendicular to the center line of your spoon, it can look like the, um, the bowl the end of the handle isn't in line with the tip of the bowl. Um, so you need to just be aware if you've got it a bit wonky like I have, that it's going to be pretty hard to, to line up those faces. Yeah, so you will take some that. you will take some off the face of the handle now if you need I will. it to okay. Yeah. So I'm taking off the face of the handle and trying, as I say, to to take out any twist in the blank now. Right. So we haven't taken cleaned, time to do look, that. We haven't cleaned up the face of the handle yet, right? Yeah, I'm cleaning up the face of the bowl and the face of the handle. So at the moment, I'm concentrating on the top surface of the spoon. Gotcha. I'll do the same. Because you'd already done your bowl, hadn't you? I did some of the bowl because I thought we were doing it at that point. I'm, I'm not, I didn't do all the way in the back. I still have some of that very pronounced uh, stop cut that I want to take okay. out. But we're leaving the handle face flat right now, right? We're not adding any. Yeah, I'm not adding anything. No. Nope. So we have not yet added any Rachel magic. No, that happens this after is pretty we work. we've got good wood underneath. This is just work a day, every day spoon carving so far. Yeah, it's boring. Like stuff. you do. Okay, so looking at mine, I'm pretty happy that this face mm -hmm. is in line. So does that look like it's in line to you? It does. 
Yeah. yeah. The other, it's hard to see, but I'm also trying to get a view on the mm -hmm. deepest part of the crank. Yeah. Uh, so there, yeah. making sure that they're a parallel as well. Mm -hmm. If you wait, if you save time at this point, trying to cut corners, you end up having to do more work later. Yeah, I've done that. Where then a, that's you're faffing a ton, and then you run out of wood, and it's very <laughs> very frustrating. Yes, yeah. So where are you, Kevin? I am re wrestling with this stop cut ledge. Hmm. I've tried to get it out, but it's left me with a pretty pronounced. Mm -hmm. um like ridge here pre-pronounced almost like a like miter and this knife can't this knife can't clean that up okay but that's just in the middle are you happy with your your rim cut the rim cut is a little needs to be a little lower no i'm not yet happy with it okay take this one down a little more Take this side a little down a little more. My um, when I make bowl shapes, they tend to almost kind of come up in the front, like the prow of a ship. Mm -hmm. And sometimes prow is that the right word? Pointy bit. And sometimes I leave it, and sometimes I smooth it out. Mm. Okay. Can you so see you my spoon? Yeah. yeah. It's your spoon. There you go. Okay. Wait. So can you see that your handle on the the handle end of the crank um, is slightly higher? So yeah, left hand side of the back of the bowl. Show me on okay, your spoon. I'm talking the... about um, this point here. That looks higher on yours than the other side. And that's something that I would try and um, even out at this point. So trying to get that swoop down into the <laughs> bottom of the crank um, level on both sides. So I would even I would go to that level of detail at this point in the spoon. Yeah, good call. Well, Kevin's doing that. I'm just taking off the crosshairs off off the top of my spoon which I, I would need to do before I started drawing on it. Otherwise I'll get confused. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I'm not worrying about this rough bit in the middle. That'll come out with a hoop knife. At this stage, it's always tricky whether I'm actually seeing the rim or whether I'm seeing the meat of the wood in the center of the bowl that's actually in front of the rim, mm -hmm. but it's blocking yeah. my view, you know? Yeah. Well, do your best guess and we'll we'll come back to it. All right, I think I got it. Okay, so I'm going to do the back now. So I want to clean up in a similar sort of way, getting rid of all of, you can see on mine that I've got quite a few ax marks. So I'm going to clean all that away. And I'm going to, because I've, I've spent a bit of time making sure that that crank is pretty much okay, I can bring the back of the bowl. Oh, how, how close would I come? I'd probably come. A sixteenth, no, an eighth. Yeah, an eighth is about an, an eighth is about an American nickel. A sixteenth is about an American dime. Yeah. Okay. Pound coin um, from the top rim. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. So do you do down the bowl first, or do you do the length I did of the bowl handle? First, yeah. What, what what was your answer? Yeah, bowl first. Bowl first, okay. And you bring down the side. rim all you you bring it all the way down to a eighth of an inch. Yeah. And you concentrating go, on these this, side cuts first. Do you come down at the shoulders too, kind of defining those back indentations? Yes, got past the. Um, sort of the widest bit of the back part of the bowl. I've come from about two thirds down the bowl where the grain changes. Okay. And then I'll come across the tip in a similar sort of way, just to define the line. 
And then do you do these? Do you do these on kind of a sharp bevel to get down to that? Yeah, on the tip certainly, and and the, on the sides a slightly more angled bevel. And I'll okay. do alternate alternating sides. I think so. I, I I almost take a, a facet off one side and then come back and do the other side, working towards the middle. I know some people do the middle first, but that requires just a bit too much strength. You have to take more material off. So I prefer yeah. working it on the sides. And then once you've got towards the middle, you can take it down and get to that chamfer that you originally placed. So in the middle of the in the middle of the back of the bowl, I'm also going to cut out any axe marks that are there, right? Yeah, you want to get underneath all the all the axe marks. I got under all the axe marks, but it's not like a final pleasing it's spoon final. shape yet, right? No, but it is pretty symmetrical. So mine is not pretty symmetrical because I have way more wood here than over here. So okay. this part, the moment, this your part, bowl size, yeah. So I, part, I sort of even it out, so there's not okay. too many lumps. Yeah. Okay. And after I've done the front of the bowl, I come down from that highest point. Now I just want to make sure I haven't done these parts yet. Mm -hmm. No, I'll do those points mm -hmm. after I've I've just run down the handle so that I can like establish the the center high point. Got. And because I set, spent time lining up the top face, I can see really quickly whether this is um, sort of level on the bottom face as well. Yeah. And once I get to about there, I can't bring it towards myself anymore. So I do that grip where you um, run it off the off your knee. Right. I've seen you do this grip a lot on Rise Up. It seems to be one of your favorite grips. It's just I only use it for this part of the, the carb, but I find it it just gives me a lot of control and strength. Yeah, that's great. And I, I want to thin out this handle because I want to be able to get some detailed work on it with the so next this, cuts once I've drawn it. At this point, we're we're cleaning up the back of the handle, but we're still it's still flat, right? It's one long flat. Yeah. yeah. Rachel, when you're doing that cut, is the face of the handle actually rested on your knee, like you're pressing down on your knee as you're cutting it? Um, no, my hand's wedged against my knee, so that's not moving. And then that mm -hmm. the, the handle's pushing up against the blade a little bit. Okay, just curious. It's too Thank much you. fun, that cut. You can take off far too much. <laughs> here's what I'm doing. Here's, yeah. here's what I've got so far. Should I thin down the back some more? Yeah. So what am I working to now? That is three eighths and three eighths. Three eighths where? Uh, just about right the way up the handle until you get to the wider point where the hump starts coming in. Oh, okay. So your handle's pretty parallel at this point too, the front and back? Yeah, I guess it is, isn't it? Um, mine, is, mine is definitely thinning. It's thinnest at the very terminal end. Okay, so what's the thickness at the terminal end? Just about a centimeter or a half an inch, a little less than half an inch. Okay, that's not bad. Yeah. Where the hump is, it's about five eighths. Okay, or... that's, about sim that's similar to mine. Right, okay. Or a one and a half centimeters. What's that? 15 mil. So am I still thinning it down some more? No, that's near enough. Okay. So you're happy with all the wood. Right. And I have and a pretty pronounced, mm. I have a pretty pronounced ridge right along the grain change on the back of the bowl. Okay. Now I don't have a pronounced ridge. Because I went this way, I went down the bowl this way, and then I went down the handle this way, it left the line. Okay. So I probably brought my um, front of the bowl from further back on the shoulder when I came. Then I would just have a ridge there. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Okay. 
I can move that ridge back a little bit. Is that ridge coming just from the thickness of your blank, Kevin? It's just the, um, <laughs> it's just that I, it's just the two planes. I carved this way and this way. And I'm getting rid of that ridge now just by curving over that. Yeah, I can oh. just round it over real fast. Yeah. Sometimes I leave that ridge and I make like a shape out of it. Mm -hmm. Sometimes yeah. I try to smooth it out. Whichever one I choose, I always feel like the other would have been a better choice. Yeah. I've got quite, my backs of my bowls tend to be quite gently curved. So I flatten it out quite a lot. All right. How's it looking? Looking good. It's really making me um, ill at ease that we haven't shaped the bowl yet. I would do that much earlier than now. Okay. So I'm going to get to that now. Yes. <sighs> Have you got a flat surface that you can put your spoon on? I can find one. Because I find that that's one thing that I do quite a lot of is putting the spoon down and making sure it's um, sitting level. Um, so this this wooden bench here has a yeah. uh, indentation. It's got a bit of a concavity. Yeah. Okay. But that's enough because if it was if it was wonky, it would, it would swing. So I'm often just putting my spoon flat on the table and just making sure that it's it's sitting flat and it hasn't got a, a tilt on the bowl or on the handle end. Okay, and wow, I never do this. That you're going to get your pencil, and I use a pencil and a ruler at this point. Ooh. So I'll talk you through how how I measure my spoons out. Um, okay. Mine is sitting nicely. I have I have some roller options here. This roller is a little flexible, which is sometimes handy. Uh -huh. And then this roller is more rigid, but it's also purple. So okay, know. I've got a purple one that's more flexible. Oh, damn, I don't have that option. <sighs> Sorry. I'll use the flexible one then, but it's okay. you'll have to deal with white. That's fine. Okay. At the moment, I'm, I'm sort of eyeballing down to where the fattest part of the bowl was and Finding a center point. So my bowl is we're going to go fattest, seven meters now. So where the fat, where the fattest. Uh, remember so the widest cross, part of your bowl. You should be able to see it about. Yeah. There, yeah. There was a crosshair right on the widest part, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So how wide is your your bowl? We can go centimeters. It is. It is four and a half centimeters and one millimeter. Okay, right, mine's about 4.8. So I'm just gonna find this- 4.6, yeah. yeah. That's how we normally do it. <laughs> I'm gonna put a mark in the center of the bowl. So if it's 4.6, what, what am I gonna 2. be? 2.8? Uh, 2.3. 2.3, nice. It's a really critical skill. This would be so much easier in fractions. Can you do it whichever, you, whichever way you want? I'm just I'll making a joke. <laughs> I'm making a joke that dividing is where the metric system really shines. Okay, I got that dot. Okay, so now I'm going to draw by eye some lines that will equate to a center line. So, so I'm, I'm drawing a center line, but by doing dots at the spoon. So I've lined up, yeah, I'm lining up that flat line on the tip of the handle with the tip of the bowl, with the bottom of the crank. And I get those lined up before I start doing my lines to mark off where the center line is going to be. Because if you get okay, those so alignment, you get a wonky center I have a line. Quick I have a quick question on my spoon here. I've already had to carve away an X, a, um, a stop cut that was pretty deep here. Yep. So that might throw off. No, I don't think it will. Okay. No. So I'm, I'm going to put imaginary dots. I'm going to put one right here. Dots, sort of at the top of the hump. I'm going to put another hump. one towards the tip of the bowl. And then I'm going to put one right at the end of the handle. Now my bowl is wonky there. So should I do 
the dot in the middle, the dot on the hump, the dot on the handle, and then line them up. The so when you say the bowl's wonky, what do you mean? It's not, the bowl doesn't have an obvious, see when I carve spoons, they have a nice point right here. So it's very obvious where the tip of the bowl is. Yep. But on mine, there's a, there's like some wonkiness happening here. So uh -huh. when I'm doing this, I'm not looking down right at the plan view. I'm actually going like this, right? Yes. And making them You're all You're sighting okay. along the handle. Yeah. That's but better. I'll do that. So yeah. So I'm I'm concentrating on the bowl first to get the center line of the bowl, and then I'm projecting that towards the tip of the handle. All right. All right. So and now I have the lines. I'll draw. So, I'll join so up the dots. Three, the, I have yeah. three dots. The one at the tip. The middle of the bowl and the center of the hump and that defines a line right oh no two dots defines a line it does all right so i'll then i'll do the one at the edge of the handle try to keep them all in one line yeah now this is my first time doing this but i feel like i'm really good at it <laughs> good it's nice to feel like that that surge of confidence yeah all right sweet okay I, I just want to say a quick hi to Alone and Oren. They've joined us now. Hi, hey guys. We're doing a, a um, Rachel 29 carving demo. If you guys, Alon and Oren, if you want to see some sweet dots that are all in one line, look at my screen because I nailed it. <laughs> now right, you can use white, white flexible ruler. White bendy ruler, OK. Yeah. And yet you're not going to join up the bowl ones. Just just join up your handle ones. You know that they're straight. Got it. Oh, now with I the... used to use the ruler right the way up the bowl as well, but I think it just leads to a bit of a wonk or the potential for a bit of a wonk. I think when it bends a little, I agree. I don't know why when the ruler bends, it tends to do a little curve. Yeah off to the side, I've, I've, I've experienced that as well. So there's a now few that things. I I... See, now that I see all my dots under the ruler, I was justified in bragging because they're awesome. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> okay, and now you're gonna sight down that incredibly straight line. Yeah. And um, and use it to draw a center line in your bowl. Okay. Near enough. Oh, this is where my shaky hands, man, really suffer. Yeah, I'm having the same issue. I have. Um, my whole family has hands that shake really badly. It's called like non-essential tremors or something. Yeah. So you really see it when something you're holding something like a with a long handle, and it magnifies the shakes. And if, as you had yeah. one side of the handle which had less material, you might want to, you know, offset your center line to account for that. Um, Offset your center line, then it's not a center line anymore. It's gonna be the center line of the finished spoon, but not of the starting blank. Are you happy? All right, I feel good, yeah. Good, okay. But my line, I didn't draw it down into the hump. Does that matter? Um, follow it down if you, yeah, I, I did. So yeah, follow it down. Because that I can't see while I'm, oh, I guess I can see it if I slide this way. Boom. Make, if you are sliding that way, just make sure that your handle tip and your bowl tip are actually parallel with each other. Otherwise you can introduce an unwitting wonk. Oh, that they're parallel this way, the plane, the. Yeah. We made sure of that earlier. Yeah, but you've got, to, you've got to make sure of it while you're sighting down to make sure that they're flat. Otherwise, you get a wonky center line. I can't trust my earlier work. You can. You're using the earlier work to make yeah. sure you get now get a center line. Gotcha. So if I line that up, we should, should see that it's 
I would never, I would never do this step. This is really cool. I would either do this by putting a spoon template over top and tracing the spoon template, or I would just carve it and do a lot of this holding it up to the sky bullshit to get it symmetrical. Yeah, well, I, I, I still do a lot of the holding up to the sky and it still ends up a struggle. So this is my way of trying to make it a little bit easier. This is a cool step, okay. Okay, so now I'm gonna draw my bowl. Mm -hmm. And I remember what my width at the center point was. So I'm gonna mark down, mine was uh, 4.8. So I'm gonna- I supposed to down. remember mine because I did not. It's okay, it was 4.6. So you're gonna come down about 2.5, which is 4.6 divided by two plus a bit. I'm gonna come down 2.5 from where, the tip? From the tip, yeah. You guys, would, the, it really bothers me that you would say 2.5 centimeters and not 15 mil. I thought that was the whole thing or 25 mil. Yeah, it would be a bit confusing to say 15. Minutes. I thought that was the whole damn thing about the metric system is that you never had that you 0.5 or any of that bullshit. No, I think it's bad. All right, two. I've come down 2.5. You're, you're just sort of getting um, back to your crosshairs, but this time yeah, okay. it's based upon the actual spoon. It's really easy to get that crosshair not perpendicular to your center line, which is what you see I'm doing now. Just trying to I just made a dot at 2.5 and now I'm gonna eyeball perpendicular. Yeah. And I'm trying to work out which is my perpendicular. And then do I extend that <laughs> perpendicular line all the way to the edges? Yeah, please. This makes me want an old timey compass, like those, what were those things called? The things that were like half moon that you used in geometry class? Mm -hmm. Yeah, a compass. Protractor. 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 That's it. Compass is the... It looks like divide, we call them divide. Dividers. Dividers on woodworking world. A compass keeps Boy Scouts from getting lost. Uh, yeah, we call them a pair of compasses. Oh, you just come in pairs? You get two of them? No, but they, that's just what we call them. They're a pair of compasses. Like a pair of pants? Yeah. I suppose it's got two legs in a similar way. Do you guys say pair of trousers? Yeah. I need a new pair of trousers? Or you just yeah. say, I, I need new trousers? If I needed a pair of pants, it would be my underwear. If I needed a pair right. of trousers, it would be my I underwear. I just didn't know if trousers also got the pair, the pair treatment. Yeah. All right, I'm doing this with a ruler and it seems dumb. Should I just be eyeballing this? Yeah, you can eyeball if you want. Yeah. Okay. But I do it with a ruler. And then I'm going to have a look at my spoon and see which side has the least material on. So I think it's this side. Would you agree? Around here, there's less material than on that side. But I'm now talking about the bottom of the spoon and there's more. Oh. So this is fatter here than that is there. Correct. All right, I guess I, I, I don't know that I can tell that on camera. Okay, it doesn't matter. You've got to pick the one that's, that's thinnest on your side and draw half a bowl on that side. Okay, that makes so, sense, right? Because you don't have that material on the other side. Yeah. And we're doing so that gonna, bottom quadrant first? You're gonna, I sort of draw an arc up towards the top from the, from the fattest part of the bowl which I've sort of measured off. And so, we're doing the top, so we're doing the top quadrants first. Yeah. And then bringing it around. And I, I guess my spoons are more like wine glasses now in shape. Mm. Thanks. <coughs> and having said that that was the narrowest side, I've drawn it on the other side. So that was dead clever. And what I want to do is I want to make it symmetrical and I cannot trust my eyes. So I just measure it off and draw little points. And you can do that in inches or you can do that in centimeters, it doesn't matter. I'm just mirroring one side to the other side. Can you see on the screen what I'm doing? Not really. 
So I'm coming across here, that's about two centimeters out from the center. So I'm gonna put a little dot on the other side, two centimeters. You could do it by eye if you wanted to. I, I, it's desperately important you keep your ruler parallel with the intersection, isn't it, at this point? It's, it's, yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty useful to do that, but there's always going to be a bit of error here. And at the end of the day, you're still going to end up two points sort of squinting, holding it up to the light and squinting. So this All right, is so I have sort of, what I've sort of done is I've drawn it and then to see if it's straight, there you go. I've kind of done one of these things where you make a link with your pencil and you see if it yeah. matches on both sides. So that's like what I'm going to, what I'm doing, but I'm doing it with a ruler so that right. I, I did it with a ruler as well, and I understand the I understand the steps dots. and it's yeah. So that's pretty good. Now we're going to do the bottom quadrant the same way. Yeah. So what I've done is I've done one side entirely. I've dotted on the other side. I've tried to make that um, the, the curves sort of match in a similar way. And my bowls, I just then draw a curve on the top and try and make it look vaguely symmetrical. And that's, that's the bowl. Is that clear enough? Yep, that looks beautiful. Okay, moving. <clears throat> yeah. I've realized it's not in focus, it's because I haven't got my glasses on. Probably looks much better if I put my glasses on. Oh, it does. Right, how are you, how are you doing, Kevin? I'm are you happy good. doing that while I talk about my handle or not? Sure. Two. Okay, because I use my ruler on my handle as well. Um, and this is not necessary. This is just because my, my spoons tend to be quite standard in, in size and shape, okay. so I want to make sure that customer will see the similarities so right, here's what i've got rachel if you can see mine real quick yeah, that looks good so now you can draw whatever handle you want to draw oh but i'm going to draw my handle so i know that at the tip of the handle i'm going to be 0.9 of a millimeter of a centimeter either side of the center line and then i come down a very technical Thumb widths, and I measure another 0.9 out. <clears throat> and then my starting point for the neck is 0.3 of a millimeter either side. Oh, good. Okay. Yeah, at the neck, I'm about 0.3 as well, like right at the top of the hump. Great. And then I use my rule to join up my 0.9 and my 0.3 extending it slightly. And the same on the other side. And then because it's not all straight lines, I just sort of draw an arc because that's why that's flared out and I want it to come in a little bit. Which way is your arc? Um, so my handle flares out towards the tip of the um, handle, and then it comes comes oh, in. Oh, I got you. So, yep. All right. So your thumbs just, thumbs width. Yeah, it's just to give it that sort of that flared flared tip. Is I I just do a um sort of two points that are the same width out from the center, just to allow it to have a bit of a bulb at the end. Wow, the drawing this little dots really exaggerates for me. I would have thought I had equal amount of wood on either side of the center line, but when I put a dot at 0.9 on each side, I did not have equal amounts of wood. Yeah, and I think some people can see symmetry much better than others, and I'm not one of the people who can see it. So I do rely on, on a ruler and pencil. Wow, that really surprises me. I need a sharper pencil too my preparation work look at that look at that <laughs> Can't do it. how are you doing 
Oh, sharpening pencils. Okay. Sharpening a little here to make these lines down the handle. Kevin, I love that you're doing the reverse grip to sharpen your pencil. That's hilarious. That's the way, man. <laughs> then I sharpen the lead with a little modified thumb push, just at the very tip of the lead. And I don't use my sloid for that, obviously. It's a big advantage of working on a table. These steps for me feel really fiddly, but I'm sure they pay off. I think it depends. I mean, if you're not doing this as a production thing and trying to be standard, then they're, they're not necessary at all. No, this is where a template really shines, but I can see how this allows for, this process allows for some standardization, but then still some sort of fun individuality yeah. to each spoon. That's right. So I'll often, you know, get a selection of spoons together and see which ones I like best and then slightly modify my technique to accentuate those features or follow them. And it means that each time I'm practicing drawing at least half a bowl. And after a run, I start checking my symmetry. So I'll try and draw a full bowl and then just check it back, measuring it off to see how accurate I was, uh, just to, to try and try and improve that skill because I know that it's something that I'm not that good at. All right. How are you doing? Great. A little bit of a rounding on the bottom, unless you just want to do that by eye. Right, you can't I can do that. Point. On the bottom, you mean the very edge of the handle? On right? the end of the handle, the terminal point of the handle. Great. And now we're going to go around the sides again, but this time we're going to care about how close we get to the line. Okay, so I'm going to do the planes around the outline, perpendicular planes around the outline of the, the pencil line. Okay, so we're keeping the walls vertical, but we're going to go all the way to the lines we just draw. I want to take yeah. a picture of it at this point. Oh, I can't take a picture of it at this point. My phone's doing some zooming. So the video will have to suffice for the, the, the archival evidence. And you can balance a curve on your, your knife. If you want. I didn't connect the neck. I didn't connect the curve around the bowl to the line coming down the handle. So I gotta do that. What's the order of operations here, Rachel? Do you? Down the handle. So exactly the same as we did before. I do the... The, hand, the side of the handle that matches my dominant hand first. And would you do that helper champ remove here? Would you do it in thirds? No, because we've got it nice and thin, that's one of the reasons I, I take a reasonable amount of material off. Um, I just do it straight as a, as a parallel cut. Oh, my, I don't think but mine is. Mine might, not, mine might not be as thin as yours. I think we measured it, didn't we? We did, but now I'm surprised because that doesn't feel to me like a comfortable amount to do in one. Okay, Cut. well, do it in two. Now, I normally go for my left hand here. But you are still working on doing some things left handed? <clears throat> yeah, mainly just that cut. Uh, they're coming down the, my non dominant side of handle. I plan to introduce more, but I'm a little bit more scared about it now. Yeah. I don't want to cut my other hand. So each time I'm having to check where my pencil line is and then turn it. This is where you could do a helper facet. Yeah. This cherry smells really good. It's amazing that that matured cherry still has that intense smell. Mm -hmm. So then the cuts up towards the end of the handle just go in the different direction because of that, that slight bowl we put on the end. You carve your pencil lines off or do you leave a little pencil line? Um, So I'll go to the middle of the pencil line. Split the pencil line, like Robin Hood splitting the arrow. 
<laughs> God, Rachel is a crafting badass. What did she say last time I accused her of sounding like the Fonz? I think she just did it again. Oh, yeah. I split the you line. Write that one down wrong. Split the pencil line. <laughs> I look at something, you know, doing that holding up to the light and I say, oh, that's not symmetrical. And then I look and I find that it's not symmetrical because I've not followed the pencil line. Mm -hmm. um, you know, <laughs> what's, what's the point of drawing it? Yeah, I tried to carve for a while without using a pencil, thinking it was going to be more organic and natural and more flowy and I would develop more skills. And then once you start using a pencil line, you're like, oh, I can, I can draw the symmetry while I'm looking for symmetry. And then I can carve to that line when it's hard to see the symmetry and it just makes so much sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And from there, it's a logical conclusion to use a template. And I totally get that. How are you doing? Doing All well. Right. I definitely had to do the helper facet on the opposite side hand of the bowl. Okay. And now I'm smoothing it all out down the handle to that line. So I'm, I've done both sides of the handle and now I'm just coming around the base of the bowl to the pencil line and making a smooth finish. Oh, and then I'm gonna do the same on the other side, watching the grain, cause I can see, can you see that? Where the grain just goes a bit wobbly, it would be easy for me to cut, cut in there. It'd be really funny if I just did it, wouldn't it? Oh shit, I knew it was gonna happen. I'm doing that backwards and forwards thing just to try and get a decent finish. And this is still quite thick here, um, quite deep piece of wood around the neck here. It's mm -hmm. going to thin down and I'll be able to come back to this again. So don't get overly concerned about getting a smooth. smooth. All right. So would you do these neck parts first and then the yes. around the rim? Yeah. So I've done, I would do one side neck part into handle. And then I tend to go to the top of the bowl on that side as well while, I, while I'm thinking about it and then go for the other side. And this is the point to remember that you're going to a pencil line and you're not gonna give any space. You gotta split the pencil line like a boss. Yeah. Maybe I that's something the best we thing I've written do. down so far is that Rachel is like the Fonz. Maybe we could do that's something we could do for the Sloyd Olympics. We could do a split the pencil line competition. But you're gonna have to have some sort of rules about the sharpness of the pencil to start with, because obviously oh, there'd some, be of a pencils, standard pencil, some of your right. pencil lines are gonna be easier to split than others. The judge, right, the judges would draw the lines. There'd be a standard line, of course. All right. That would be a great time to refill my coffee, but I would hate to cause a, a lull in the action-packed video. You would just have to catch up really fast. Really fast and unsafely? I'll do that. <laughs> and I, I won't bother to wipe wood chips off my apron. I'll just run into the house. <laughs> Get out of my way if you caught me! <laughs> oh my goodness. Hello. Oh. Rachel. I've gone all the way around the outside. Let's just leave it. Um, it looks a bit wonky. Does it look wonky to you too? Um, it looks like one side is slightly broader than the yeah. other. Yeah, and this is exactly the point in trying to try and get rid of that. Yeah. Because even though you've drawn it and you've measured it, it's still, I don't know, do you think, well, why don't you just use a template? But. Mm 
you read my coffee mug? I'm spilling coffee on my hand to tilt it for the camera. It's a great mug, Kevin. That's safety. The tip of my nose is telling me that it's very cold in my garage. All right. And Rachel, while Kevin's catching up, um, is it just to practice drawing that you don't use a template? Is it so that each of your shapes is a little organic and you don't get bored of the shape? What is your kind of philosophy on? So it's it, it started off as to practice drawing, but yeah. what it's become is about the ability to shift over time. Yeah. Um, and for me to, to see spoons from a year ago and know that, yeah, that's what I like then and, and they've moved slightly uh, to allow that. And I think when you carve a lot of the same type of spoon, yeah. it's a way for me to maintain interest is mm -hmm. to know that things are shifting rather than just being drawing around a template and churning them out. I think I'd lose a bit of the joy. Mm -hmm. That makes sense, yeah. That's keeping some so. beauty and, and freedom within the design, but also having some consistency with the size of that axiom template. That's yeah. Really cool. And it, it means that I can see growth in my own carving and, and I've got space within my production work to follow, you know, things that are exciting me, maybe it's about how the transitions go or trying mm -hmm. out, you know, whatever, uh, rather than that having to be in fun carving time and then me feeling a bit constrained in, in, in when I'm doing it for an order. Yeah. So are we happy with that? This is this great. I good. love when you, like when you carve in class or when you carve when, you're doing something slightly different and you're paying a lot of attention. You're really doing everything really deliberately. I think things always turn out so great. The little extra bit of focus that comes from being in a class or whatever in front of people or when something is a little different, it changes your attitude, your academic posture maybe. So at least I experienced that. Is that looking more symmetrical? Ugh. I think so. I don't know. Good, good enough. One of the ways I find to check symmetricality is look at the back side of it, oh. because often the front side can look okay, and then you realize that you've just got a bit more on the back. So mm -hmm. I'll looking at I'll it upside it. down. Looking at it upside oh, yeah, down is good too. Well. Yeah, that's a right brain, left brain trick. When you hold a spoon one way, you're seeing the spoon. And when you hold it another way, you're seeing the shapes. Yeah. And I think that's a front and back for me as well. Um, yep. When I look at the front of the spoon, I'm seeing a spoon shape. Whereas somehow the back isn't the same. We did an amazing um, exercise in an art class I took in high school where there was a drawing of a a slightly distorted man that we were supposed to copy and you were supposed to hold the thing you were supposed to copy it upside down mm -hmm. and the about half the class thought the homework of copying it upside down was a pain in the ass and they turned it right side up and they just drew it real fast and the other half was diligent about copying it upside down and when you when the art teacher hung them all on the wall, you could totally tell who had drawn it right side up because they had all the slightly distorted parts, they had smoothed out because their brain had gotten involved. And they said, that's not where a nose goes. And they put the nose. Mm -hmm. It was super obvious that people who had turned it upside down had done a more faithful reproduction because they hadn't got their, their what is it, their left brain involved that identifies them. Anyway. I feel good about my vertical walls all the way around the spoon. Good. Are you feeling good about your symmetricality? Dun, 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 dun. I feel good about that too. Dun, 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 dun. Good. Dun, 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 I'm feeling okay about that as well. Dun. What I did, Rachel, was I drew my lines and then I trusted them and I carved right to the line and I split the line and it looks great now because it looked great when I drew it. That somehow didn't work for me. <laughs> I watched that first video and every single time I'm a jackass and then Rachel just ignores me, it makes me laugh so much. <laughs> it takes such a lot of energy to ignore you. 
Right. So we're happy with our sides. Yep. I could now keep it's time to now, do some to. carving. See, all of that's just boring, run-of-the-mill stuff. Okay, now we're going to do some carving. Um, so I start with a crank, um, which is almost almost fine, isn't it? But now is the time to to have a look at the crank coming down this angle and make sure you've got a really nice flow uh, on both sides, um, and just go where the shape excites you now. So this is where I feel that I can just play. Uh, I've established all of the important things I need to establish. And now if I want to try a different neck transition or um, back of the bowl, I can do it. All right, so my crank doesn't flow back towards the uh, shoulder. What it kind mean? of goes down to the widest part and it kind of comes back up in a sort of very rigid two angles. So I'm gonna smooth yeah. that out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I love that that view down down there. That's one of my favorite views of a spoon. So I, I really concentrate on on getting that line to look sexy. And if your walls are vertical, this shouldn't be changing the plan view at all. Yeah. So you've put all the ground groundwork in so that you can you can play within constraints. And Rachel, your bowls are pretty shallow. Is that right overall? Pretty shallow. Yeah, like you're not doing, once you go in with a hook knife, you're not hollowing a ton out because it looks I like- try, you've got, yeah. yeah, I try to hollow more out towards the back just because otherwise I find that men don't like the spoons as much because they don't feel that it's gonna serve them enough food. Okay. Um, so I, I, I put the depth into the back um, so hey, I can I, prove that they can pile as much on as they want. Really? Aren't men, men are so insecure about the size of their spoons, aren't they? <laughs> they seem to be insecure about an awful lot of things, but yeah. Why do men feel like they need such a big, wide, stupid bowl, huh? So dumb. <laughs> but I've got to cater for that half of the population. Right, we can't deny their existence. Oh, stupid. Um, so I'm checking that nice curve there, yeah. but I'm also checking that I haven't changed the angle mm. at the front of the bowl. Um, and I'm also checking to see how it might look side to side. Though it's hard to properly do that at the moment. You can only really do it from the end to check that your two sides are the same because you've still got the bumper material in the middle. Right. How are you feeling with getting the, the curves in for the crank? I have on one side, the deeper part is in the back, the, towards the back shoulder, like the back quarter of the spoon. I'm trying mm -hmm. to make the other side match. Good. Mine's somehow got slightly higher on this side again. Yeah, and then in trying to make the curve match, I've brought that side lower. So now I have to yep. maintain the curve on the other side to bring the whole thing down deeper to make it match. Okay. So once you've got your top surface of the crank, pretty good. Yeah, then I work onto the handle. And this is where I start introducing a bit of a tail flip onto the handle and a bit of curve. So I know that this is pretty flat, so I want to dig a little bit in here to give a bit of a tail flip and then ease it off. And I'll do that a few times just to establish a bit of a... Oh, this is where that, this is where that kind of prow of the ship phenomenon happens here at the tip of my bowl. Would you leave that? See how it kind of comes back, it kind of comes back up and then comes around and then goes back in? So mine... Or would you make an effort to flatten this here? Mine tends to be flat on the end, but that's because my bowl shape now has quite a, a flat end, whereas yours is more curved. So you're gonna see the prow effect much more on a pointed bowl than on a flat bowl. So I don't think you can do much about that. I think you leave that because it's a function of okay. the, it's a function of this curve. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's a function of that. 
I don't understand what curve you're saying it's a function of, so but I do agree you, that I leave it. You've got quite, you've got, see how flat my front of bowl is? Oh, oh no, compared to yours. Where are you saying yours is flat? Oh, yeah. yes. Yep. Yep. Whereas yours, I mean, if you think about a number nine, it's even more pointy. So with a pointed number nine, you get that prow even more pronounced. Whereas with a, a stubby ended bowl, you it tends to be flatter at the front. Oh, um, I see what you're saying. Yeah. I see what you're saying, Maybe. but I could flat, but I could flatten it out now. But all that you stuff could. is all that I stuff. Think... You like to have all that stuff established by this point. Yeah. Cool. All right, then I'll leave it. I like the prow effect. I do feel like it slightly changes the function of the spoon, but it's useful in some situations and not others. So now you're coming to your handle top and you're going to introduce a bit of a, a, a tail flip. So you're going to introduce tail flip by carving like a secondary bowl on the tip on the top of the spoon. I'm going to, I'm coming. You see, I, I, I leave the tip of the, the handle where it is. And then I come quite deeply down and then tail it off towards the hump. Right. And we're looking at the plan view of your, your spoon right now, right? Not the back. Got it. Yep. So I'm I, could, try and match. I could confirm with a pencil, but I feel pretty good about it. I'm going to take the, here's my spoon. I'm going to carve a, a, like a secondary crank in back here at the tail. Yeah. Yeah. And I think you can be really exaggerated on tail flip. It never looks quite as um, pronounced on the finished spoon somehow. And this is where this is where you can take advantage of that kind of slicing on a wide bevel, because really the the grain shouldn't be allowing me to do this. But since it's really beveled and slicing, it works yeah. out. And you don't have these um, shapes, Rachel. You just kind of carve them in organically. Yeah. Nice. So this is what I would call fun. Yeah, that's. Great. And then the grip. How would you do the less comfortable side? I kind of um, have this. I kind of have this grip where I'm going to do the potato peeling grip, and my thumb is pushing off my other hand under the bowl so that I can do kind of a. Okay, I sort of. I've got the. Most of my um, control is coming from my fingers on the back of the knife. I'm pushing down with my thumb onto the bevel here. And then I'm controlling it with my finger. Oh, okay, I'll try that. And if you put two, two or three fingers on, you can push it even further. Gotcha. Yeah, that's nice. It's hard to slice though. I don't have anything to pivot. Ah, I can pivot. Got it. Yeah, you can because you can move yep. up the up the bevel. Move my whole my knife hand, move my whole knife hand wrist away from me and introduce yeah. the slice. Okay. So I've got a bit of a movement to the top of the handle there now. Yep. And it's coming to the to the hub. So I just did the I've just done the two sides. sides. Great. I haven't done and the middle. And you can yet. take off the middle. Now I'll do the middle. Okay. As you come up to here, you are definitely going against the grain. So I'm going to turn the spoon down and just clean that up. Which part are we cleaning up? Okay, gotcha. Oh man, these facets it's still look great. Flat on the top, I've got a little bit of a curve there, but it's mostly flat mm. on the surface. So I'm going to add more facets later, but not just yet. These facets look great and I'm sad to carve them away, but I know that this is a part of the spoon where it feels better in the hand if it's flattish. All right, so this is what I've got now. See, I carved down to match, but when I get to here, there's no way I could carve that off without chipping it. So I'm gonna turn around and come from the other direction. Okay, right, so I, do it more gradually than that. So I, because I'm taking off less material each time, I would have taken gotcha. that first cut much further down the um, down the spoon. 
So if gotcha. you, so you would have stayed shallower and that would have allowed you to travel further down. Yeah, so I can travel all the way up to about there before it starts pulling out. So I'm, you know, a good, good way up the, the hump. And then I'm just going to dive down the, the dolphin bit. I quite like it when the, the curve from the front of the dolphin hump goes directly into the bowl. So that needs to be quite a, a steep angle here. Without a dippy bowl, just going right in. I'm just going right in, yeah. And I don't really need to clean that off, but I just want to see where it is. Sweet. All right, I got my tail flip. Your tail flip happening. Are you happy with your tail flip? Good, you need to so. bring that, that line all the way down the handle now. Okay. So my tail flip is, oh, jeez. Comes. Bring the line down. all the way down the handle. Okay, have a look at mine. You've got a tail flip that comes in quite deep. Yep. And then steps out, whereas you need to have it coming more gradually up to so this point okay. needs to be smoothed out yeah so i'm softening but not all the way because i don't want to lose the hump no okay but it, you don't need much hump to have a hump yeah okay that's a good one that's a good one ron i was gonna say ron <laughs> there you go you don't need much hump to have a hump there's a line from a got it a popular song And for me, that's the top of the handle, I'm just about done. Mm. I've got some fuzzy bits, but I'm going to come back to them. Are you happy with me going on to the back of the bowl while you're finishing off there? Yeah, I'll try to listen and carve at the same time. Okay, so I'm going to do, it's exactly the same process. We've gone around the edges, we've done the top surface, now we're going to do the bottom surface. Um, and probably halving the the rim depth around the sort of around this perimeter of the of the bowl to, so it's almost consistently small around there in my bowls i get wider towards the the back there mm -hmm. um so I'll, I'll start just by taking the edges right down all right so we're still you're only doing the front of the bowl right from the grain change down to the tip yeah and on the back of the bowl, I want to take off. Ideally, this is the last time I'm touching the back of the bowl, which is okay for me because this is the shape that I'm really used to carving. If you're not used to carving it, then I'd expect you to have to do another iteration. Um, so I still have know, about an eighth. You said we're having the distance, we're, we're, we're having the thickness of the rim, and then we're making the rest of the bowl just a nice gentle curve. Yeah. So this isn't the final thickness of the rim yet, right? Um, once you get used to carving this shape, then yes, you could take it right down to the final thickness because you know that you're, you sort of know the con constraints of your hook knife within this bowl shape. So you'd be confident um, of how, how much you can take off the back of the bowl. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. So I'm expecting to be pretty damn close. And I've probably gone less than half on the rim. Did you say? It's hard to tell. Yeah. That's And you can see how how shallow that is. Mm -hmm. All right. I'll often hold it up like that just to try and get 
make sure that that's mm -hmm. uh, that's symmetrical. So in my mind, the front of the bowl layer is just about finished now. Mm -hmm. All right, I think I've got my rim. From about the grain change, it kind of dives down to the rim, and then the rim kind of stays consistent all the way around. Good. And it is about it's pretty much two mil, maybe a little less than two mil. Yeah. So mine's probably nearer. Yeah, it's mine's one probably and a half. nearer it's like, one. Mine's like one and a half mil. Yeah. I could get it down to one, but I like the idea that I still have a little more room yeah. to clean up the rim again. I could clean up the rim one more time and not lose yeah. that. I think I think that's that's sort of the progression as you get used to a shape as you can come in more closely. And now I'm just gonna work, I'm gonna work up and over the back of the bowl and just yeah. try to make it. So I sort of come back up the shoulder gradually. One of the one of the bits about a spoon that I hate being too deep is are these shoulders. So I, I now thin that back because I don't like seeing heavy, heavy weight in that area. And do you thin it back and also go in? No, I tend to make it flat. Um, so you're talking about carving away this corner right here, right? I'm talking about carving away this, this weight here. So I'm not taking away corner, I'm actually taking away all of the back of the bowl. Okay. So my bowls end up pretty, oh, yeah. pretty flat there. This is the chamfer that's put on late on, but they're pretty, they're pretty flat all the way back. Oh, and the Rachel spoon I have, I don't think that's the case. Yeah, see, that's where you get the joy of movement. No, I think I think you're right. I think that's relatively recent for me. It's pinched in a little there on the back. Yeah. So now I, I tend, I don't know whether it was a time saving thing uh, or whether I actually, I think I just prefer it. It's definitely trying to pinch that in there um, is a nuisance trying to make it look symmetrical yeah. and elegant. Yeah. Okay. Whereas kind of keeping it closer to vertical is easier for sure. Okay, so I still haven't kind of rounded over the up and over. Okay. I'm doing that now. This is where I've really started trying to get single facets from spine all the way down to tip. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I see Rachel's been doing that as well, which I think helps with just the smoothness of the finishing cuts. You don't have it as does. much texture. And that's I think also it helps with getting it symmetrical because I think your yeah. knife feels feels the bumps more. Your mm -hmm. knife feels the bumps, and it um, if you have cut lines that are traveling in that direction, you don't really feel them in use. Yeah, yeah, your mouth feels it less, and your knife feels it more. Mm -hmm. And so I'm constantly looking down that view, mm -hmm. um, and trying to make sure that these two. With um, depths are symmetrical no, as well. No, they're muted anyway. So. Maybe Ron wanted to ask a question. We'll unmute him at that point. <laughs> no, I just wanted to be the center of attention, like always. <laughs> All right. All right. So, in 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 thinning the back. I'm reintroducing that ridge. Are you rounding that ridge over? I'm rounding it off as I go. Okay. So I can get my facets coming almost from the very back of the bowl forward. Mm -hmm. Not quite sure. Can you take it's a slice all the back. way? Can you take a I slice take all the way from the tip all, all the way down way to the hand? To that, yeah.
Because I sometimes try to make it look as if a facet goes from one tip all the way to the back of the handle, the tip of the handle, but it doesn't actually do that. I have to carve it in two directions. You have to be, uh, it's quite, you need a sharp knife to get these ones at the back. Um, you know, you are going against the grain a little bit at the very, at the very back. And that's often where I swap knife. Getting some really awesome chatoyance from this cherry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Does it sort of go across the Atlantic and feel a bit French? <laughs> chatoyance. <laughs> Okay, I'm just faffing with the back of the bowl now. So I'm happy enough with the back of that. Beautiful. So I'm going to come down the back of the handle now. Introducing a little bit of a uh, curve inwards there. Mm -hmm. And this is where, this is game day, right? We're cutting now and these cuts stay. Yeah. 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 Which is why I've swapped knife. Oh, you swap knives? I'll swap knives too. This knife can't handle all this finesse work. Away with you. It was it was mo mostly. I don't think I really needed to, because this time cherry's for, really behaving well. Time for time for excalus, Lloyd. Um. So I come down to. Oh. A thickness there on both sides and then I want to continue the same thickness towards the end of the spoon. So you're bringing the thickness to a consistent point halfway up and then following it all the way down to the tip. Yeah. And will you will you will you kind of m m m m mirror the tail flip on the underside of the spoon? Yeah I will. Okay. Yeah so that's what I'm doing now. I'm doing just the this, this third of the spoon and coming right to the I'm end. I'm still mirroring it. Faffing about on the back of the bowl. Yeah. Which I don't which I don't normally do. Normally I just kind of screw around, but since we're doing it today, I'm faffing about. <laughs> okay. But, now you've but, learned um, an important lesson then. I think that's vital. Trying to come, I'm trying to do the trying to get the facets to go up and over the grain change, and Excalus Lloyd is just not doing it. I've gone, I've done the two sides, getting the thickness, and then I'm just going to go down the top. I can definitely come up and over the grain change a little bit better with this one than the other one. The other knife I was using had a bit of a hollow grind in it. I feel like the hollow grind doesn't turn over convexes as well. Okay. So I'm doing lots of checks on either side to make sure that it's vaguely flat and mirroring each other. And that's the profile that I'm aiming to end up with there. That's gorgeous. And the same on the other side. And checking the end to make sure you've not introduced any, any difference in thickness across there. All right, so now I'm that's gonna it. come down in thickness okay. about the halfway point. So that's mostly carved now. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm now going to put a couple of chamfers on the back of the handle, which is early. Well, it's not really. We're, we're coming to the point where I'm going to finish off the handle. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to put chamfers in just to narrow this side even more, the, narrow the side profile even more. I'm so I'm really bringing worried. the, I'm still bringing the handle down to the final thickness at the, at the midpoint of the handle. And that's leaving yeah. a, a ridge. That's leaving a ridge down the center. Are we keeping that ridge or are we carving it? No, you're going to flatten it off to make it flat. Okay. Flatten it off to make it flat. Don't write that one down. Commence flattening, and flattening it off to make it flat. <laughs> just, just make it flat would have done, wouldn't it? And then I'm going to follow that thickness all the way down the handle, mirroring the tail flip on the top. Mm -hmm. 
and I've put a little chamfer on either side there because now I'm going to thin the handle even further. So I don't know whether you remember, it was about, it was three mil from, from the center line either side on that neck. And that's thicker than it needs to be. And I can tell that because it's nice and strong. So depending on your spoon, now's the time to finesse it to make it, for me, to make it narrower. So it's just strong enough. Um, and I've, I've thinned down the side so I can just by eye come in the side. So it's no longer that boring straight line. It's now um, just thinning up. And then I'll look down, I'll sight down it so that I mirror it on the other side, which is mostly by muscle memory. Hope, hopefully, I'll sort of come in the same amount, but I'll double check by sighting down it. Are there wood species that you don't go that thin on? Like, would you do a birch or an alder that thin? Yeah, that's right. So that's why I do it like this. So I get to that stage and then I sort of assess it. Yeah. Um, and some things just naturally, and it's another reason for me not to use a template, I think. Yeah. Um, so that I can adjust the spoon to fit the wood that I've got in my hand. Mm -hmm. And then these cuts are going to be the final cuts yeah. up the neck to get a nice smooth finish there. These are the parts on Rise, Up and Carve where you don't talk as much. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Man, this is looking really cool and sufficiently different from other things I've carved. I dig it. It doesn't um, quite look. Of, it doesn't. It doesn't look like the carbon copy of a Rachel spoon either, which is kind of cool. Like it's, it's there, it's related, but it's not the same. So now I'm going to just. Show you, can I stop and show you what I've got and where sure, I am? Sure. I'm going to put my glasses on so I can see. Yep. Okay. So here's the front edge. And I still have a little bit here that I was intending to carve away, but I don't mm -hmm. have to. And then here's the the profile view. The hump is really pronounced for me. It is, yeah. And then the tail flip is really strong too, which is kind of cool. Yeah. And then I bring it down to thickness here and then follow that th thickness all the way down the rim. Yeah. That's a pretty strong quarter inch. It's a little wider than quarter inch. Mm -hmm. How does it feel and in the hand? It feels okay. It feels like a spoon that I want to hold way back here because of that tail flip. Because of the flip, yeah. And I still have a little indentation here. This isn't flat in this area. So that indentation makes me want to hold it way back here. Yeah, which I don't normally do. I would normally hold it about there. Yep, me too. That feels like a spoon for getting the last bit of like mayonnaise out of a jar. <laughs> you hold it way back there. So I could soften I... that. I could still. You could. If yeah. I brought the if, if I brought that indentation further forward, it wouldn't have that, that psychological effect. Yeah. yeah. Let me see what your let me see how thick your neck is. I'm curious. Okay, so you pinched the neck in, but you pinched it in, so it's still the sides are still straight right mm -hmm. they are at the moment yes i took okay. a bit of a chamfer off the back first to make that easier that makes sense because you've still got quite a bit of material here basically i just wanted to see i wanted to see if you pinched then like an hourglass or if you pulled the whole sides in in straight lines i started from about here um about where the bulb is and um i took gradually more off as i came to yep no. got it so I'm going to do some facets on the top now. So the handle's finished in that plane. It's mostly finished at the bottom. I just want to introduce a bit of detail and interest to the top. And at the moment, I quite like a rounded top to my spoons, um, but I also like practicing chamfers. So I always start with chamfers. And if I get perfect chamfers, you know, five running smoothly down to the, to the neck, 
then I'll leave it like that. But likely as not, they won't be perfect, and then I'll just round it over because I quite like I quite like the result then as well. So just bringing. One chamfer up one side, double check on the top to see how it looked. Other side, which wasn't as deep, and then we'll go. This is really where you can show off your curly cue skills. Yeah. Not that we care about such things on the Sloyd ladder of enlightenment. I don't think that. Rachel's cut a single straight chip yet. Every single cut she's done in the last couple of hours. Totally. I'm sure there are some men. They're so are we leaving these walls? Are we leaving these walls sharp? Or when I chamfer the back, should I start my chamfer way up here and bring it all the way down? I do those chamfers when I do the micro chamfer around the rest of the bowl. Okay. Because remember, you thought you might need a bit more off the back of the bowl, so there's no point in starting doing chamfers up there now. Okay, so that's the top part. Oh, no, I'm going to round them in any case, just because I like it rounded. So to round it, you just go between the. Just enjoy these cuts, really. They're my, one of my favourite cuts. It comes all over the curly words. And coming down when they're rounded. Okay. A little bit of a high spot there. Double check at the end. Looks neat. Um, the last thing to do on the handle is just to re-establish that chamfer that effectively I took off when I thinned down the down the handle. This is more about how it feels in the hand than anything else. Otherwise that corner can just be a little bit. Trying to match up the, the edge on both sides. So now I'm going to narrow, now that I've faceted the back corners off, I'm going to bring the neck in more narrowly. Yes. Because I can to tell it's still. So judging by how, how I mean, you perhaps don't want quite as delicate looking a spoon. Um, this step here is where it really pays off that we lined up the grain and made straight grain. Yeah. And that we chose the nicest blanks that we had. So that's the back of the spoon pretty much done. And you can faff to make sure that those chamfers are equal. And then I just take it, pass it off the tip. And so before I've touched the bowl, 
that's the handle. The only thing that I'm yet to do on that handle is put micro chamfers on, and I'll do that after I finish the. Finish oh the yeah, bowl. I would have roughed. I would have rough carved my bowl so long ago. Yeah. So that, but that's it done. So now I can enjoy doing the bowl. Is it all right for me to start the bowl there? And let you continue. Um, let me review. Let me review what my next couple steps are. I just narrowed the handle. Now the handle is about five and a half centimeters, five and a half millimeters. Okay. Uh, it's about six. My handle is about six mil right before the hump. Right. So Mine's I could make that, five. I could make it narrower still, yeah? Yeah, but do it, you know, it's not about how thin it is, it's how, whether it's strong enough and whether it, whether it looks good. Right, okay. I think it looks good. And I think the thinness here doesn't, it doesn't benefit the spoon at all. It just looks light and refined. <laughs> Which you'd hate to have. I said refined, not delicate. You see that? <laughs> okay, so I'm going to start hollowing out the... Oh, hold on. So I did that. So I pinched in the neck. And now what am I doing? I, I have facets on the back. The we top established still... the facets on the back and do whatever you want on the top. So my, my top's quite um, quite rounded. Can you see there? Okay. So all the way down, I've got a, a rounded surface there. It started off, I was going to do chamfers, but I didn't have enough material. So I just did it rounded. So the chamfers now are making this edge look thinner. Yeah. How, what's the final thickness there? On the side side? Yeah. Is it about the same thickness as your back chamfer? Do you try to make those match? I don't know. It just sort of varies. So this is just over 3 sixteenths. 3 sixteenths most of the way down. What was that? Was that a pound coin? Yeah, mine's or? about 3 sixteenths too. So that's cool. Good. All right. I'll make those facets look nice and then I'll round over the top of the bowl and then I'll be wherever you are now. I'm just roughing out to start with with the bowl. I'm trying not, I don't want to get, um, it's always a balance roughing out a bowl between mm -hmm. doing it quickly and introducing ridges. Yeah. So I try and do it halfway between the two where I'm getting lots of material out. I'm not leaving any difficult points mm -hmm. that are going to cause problems later on. I should be showing off my French chatoyons. Chatoyons. <laughs> nice. I'm going to bring this up and around the tail flip as well. Beautiful, authentic French, and then like that lame American Italian that everybody does. Holy cannoli! What's that meant to be from? Holy cannoli. What's the heck? What what did it start off as? Holy cannoli. I would think just because cannoli rhymes with holy. <laughs> so how is it Italian? The word cannoli is Italian. <laughs> That's funny because I also think of holy moly as being American Italian, and there's no Italian words in there at all. Holy moly. <laughs> in fact, now that I'm considering it for the first time, what the heck is a moly? It's nothing. <laughs> it just rhymes with holy. So holy cannoli is just a, like a, an extension of holy moly. I think so. I would assume they evolved that way, but who knows? Maybe it went the other way. All right, so I'm doing that cool thing. On Rachel's spoon that I have, she does this cool thing where there's a facet that goes all the way up and around the handle. Like, it looks like she carved it by spinning the spoon. Mm -hmm. I'm going to try to emulate that. That's one of the things I show off to other spoon carvers when I show them Rachel's spoon. I don't do it anymore. When they're a non-spoon carver, I don't let them touch the Rachel spoon that I have. <laughs> That's fair. I don't trust them. So 
So I'm roughed out the middle of that. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because a bit of shadow. Is your uh, ball asymmetrical or is that the camera? <laughs> Question. I'm not really sure. I think it's the grain. I'm blaming the grain. <laughs> and I'm just gonna make sure that my rims basically the same all the way around. Mm -hmm. And because I said I went deeper at the back, I'm just gonna take a little bit more. My, my bowl's looking less and less symmetrical as time goes on. Around the bottom here. Mm. Yep, around there. So now I'm why gonna think, take- Why do you think that's happening? That's interesting. Um, I think it's a left brain, right brain thing. As I hollow out the, the bowl, the grain, the lack of symmetricality of the grain starts to really um, stand yeah, out. Yeah, I get that. You start to follow the grain line instead of the edge. So I'm just going to say to my head, it is actually symmetrical. So I've taken out, this is the first time I can actually see both sides of the bowl at the same time on the mm. uh, crank. So this last pass around the, the top surface of the crank is to make sure that it's symmetrical side to side, as well as just cleaning up that surface. But first that surface is pretty angled down this way because of the way the knife had to be. Now I'm flattening it off so it's more um, it would be a parallel surface with the, the bottom of the spear, the handle, if the handle was flat. So the knife is very much parallel with the top of the spoon. Mm. I'm at the stage where I might be carving facets into the surface of the handle or I might be starting the round over. Yeah. How are the facets gone? Are you gonna I think the fat so far I only have two little facets on the edge and they look all right. We'll see how the middle facets go. I just didn't have enough material. Yeah I think I made it too flat so the yeah I don't think the middle facets I think they're gonna wash everything out instead of looking defined. Yeah. It's funny, I have like two grain changes trying to do these facets on the handle. The That's tail, one before, the, the, yeah. one before the, the tail flip yes. and the one in the middle of the tail flip. Yeah. And so I'm continually sighting down the spoon to try and make sure that that, um, I'm getting to see those corners and making sure that those are in line. Okay, so then I'm ready to finish off the bowl. And I've got... All right. Yeah. If, if I faff with these facets, I'll never catch up to you. So this is going to be rounded over. So I'm coming in right to the edge to try and establish, mm -hmm. not, not worrying too much about hollowing in the center of the, of the bowl. I'm trying to establish the rim mm -hmm. now. And then I'll come how back. How do you establish? Yeah, this is a step I want to see how you do because getting, okay. a, getting a bowl that thin and the rim nice is a challenge. So I've, take, I've, I've roughed out the center, so I'm not having to worry about removing too much material. And I'm just eyeballing to try and get a relatively even rim. By the time you put a micro sample on it, you don't really see it. So you don't need to worry about the detail too much. I was going to say, do you leave a little rim here intentionally or do you carve right to the corner and then you let the micro chamfer define the edge? I do leave a rim, but it's really, it's between a million and a million and a half maybe. Okay. So I'm going to switch to rough carving the bowl now. Yeah. And so when you're rough carving, leave a, a rim of about three mils. 
Okay. Get it approximate to the right depth and leave a room of three mils before you come down the, the top surface of the bowl for your final getting each side aligned. We're done carving the back of the bowl, right? So I have to carve the inside of the bowl to match what we have there? Ideally, yeah. I normally do it. I normally get the, I'm happy with the inside and then I carve the back of the bowl to match. Well, I think it's, it's about familiarity with shape and your hook tools. So as you continue to carve a similar shape, you can lose that iterative step because you know, you know you've just got a better idea of where it's gonna end up. Yeah. So I shift my grips quite a lot mm -hmm. with a hook knife just to get, I don't do it in a formulate way, I don't think. I just go where the grain is because often the, the bowl is where I have the wiggliest grain. Yeah. So I can't always guarantee that it's going to flow in certain directions. So I don't really have a process, I don't think, for the order I do it in. I just keep going round until I'm happy. Otherwise, you don't, have a, you don't have a process for what? What's it? For like the order in which I approach hollowing out a bowl, I don't always go, you oh, know, gotcha. tip to tip to base until or you know, I don't know. Various different people have have they can draw diagrams and things to say which order they do it in, and I can't. But I'm continually feeling it with mm. both thumbs just to gauge how smooth it is, but also how thin it is. So I'm just getting that those last fluffy bits from the inside of the bowl. And if I was worried about getting, yeah, struggling with the finish here at this point, I would just restrop my um Mm -hmm. it's behaving really quite well it's really interesting to me that you leave the bowl all the way to the end like this yeah i think the bowl is the piece where you can you can spend three times as long on it <laughs> if you want to it, you know, how, how finished is finished um, can be a variable with a bowl. So I'm going to say that's finished. So after the center of the bowl is fully hollowed out, mm -hmm. and I'll go around the outside uh, just to take off any bumps, any vague imperfections in the in that surface just to get the rim looking as clean as possible. You're going around the, the plan view perimeter? Yeah. Yeah. With yeah, most there still are a little potato there's still a couple peeler. bumps and irregularities that get exposed when you lower the rim. Yeah. And there's something about doing the inside of the bowl. It makes the bumps on the outside stand out. And I try just to be taking the high points off here mm -hmm. rather than recutting the rim. I'm really pleased with my spoon so far. How's yours looking? Yeah, it's looking good. Is anybody carving along or are you all just kind of carving your own spoons and hanging out? They're muted, they can't speak. No. I think carving their own things 
from what I've. Yeah. And at that point, after I've gone around the outside, I'll just double check the back to make sure that the rim is a consistent thickness all the way around. And because I was really close to it before, I'm not going to spend any time finessing the back of the bowl. I feel like my the hump still is kind of harsh and rough. Right. So sometimes what I do there is bring the hook knife right to the top of the hump and and carve down with a hook knife into the bowl from. Does that make sense? So that you can yeah, actually that's what I'm get doing. continuous. Yep. Yeah. But then it looks like the top of a hill that a kid could sled down. Yeah, you can always. No, that's nice. It could be a feature. The the the, the sledging spoon. You see how sharp that is. Oh. Yeah, it is. So you can easily just smooth that back over. Yeah. Smooth it back over. There's one part of this rim that is a bit narrower than everything else. So I just take a little bit more. And at that point, it's ready for micro chamfers. Brilliant. Yeah. It's got a gorgeous shine on it, Rachel. That's really nice. It's, it's, it's come out nicely, hasn't it? Yeah. Are you carving cherry as well, Rachel? Yeah. So when I talk about micro chamfers, I'm going to take my hook knife just lightly. Can you see that yet? Around all of these internal corners. Use your hook knife for that, huh? With inside the bowl, yeah. Interesting. And I'm trying to take off very, very little. And I'm also not worrying about it too much. I think it's best to take less than more. Sometimes I question if that internal chamfer is necessary. Yeah, that's why I don't worry about it. And then, it because you can, I'm gonna um, burnish it. And that's effectively going to take off the sharp corner as well. So then I take a chamfer around the edge of the top surface and again taking as little as possible. And then off the back, right the way around the perimeter. I always try and start in the same place so I remember. Because mm -hmm. of where the grain changes, I start halfway down one side and then I just need to remember to go all the way around and then start there again. But it wouldn't be the first time that I go around doing a second micro chamfer over the top of the first micro chamfer because I can't remember. <laughs> And then the micro chamfer towards the back of the bowl on the back just starts to getting a little bit bigger. Mm -hmm. So it's less of a micro chamfer and more of a chamfer. And then joins in with the one mm -hmm. uh, on the back of the, the back of the handle. Nice. So you've got something to match up to. That's that done. And I will take one more chamfer just down that sharp corner of the handle. All right. And the very base.
and that's just been done. Fantastic. Nice. I'm going to just use my burnisher, mm -hmm. burnisher, and I burn it. Some people don't like burnishing the bowls, but I burnish. Some people don't like burnishing the bowls. No, they say I think Matt White is a non bowl burnisher. Hmm. I've, oh, Roy. I've spent my time making my hooks as sharp as possible. Why the hell are you burnishing out all of those? Well, Roy Rock only burnishes the bowl. He thinks it's the only part that matters the, for, to, to burnish. And then just around all the surfaces. I like it smooth in my mouth. Mm -hmm. And then I would probably go and put some wax, wax oil mix on it. Any final thoughts, Kevin? Any final thoughts, Kevin? Yeah. The, there's some parts that were pretty sufficiently different, but overall, right now, my handle feels like it's got an amazing shape to it that I wouldn't have been able to accomplish on my own. So following those steps definitely left me with a really nice, mm -hmm. graceful handle that's graceful in a couple different planes that when I try to do it, I don't really pull it off. So I'm excited that I might be able to follow those steps and get nicer handles. And it feels pretty done, which for me is pretty early in the process. So that feels great. That's fantastic. But yeah, no, this is a cool spoon. I'm really happy with it's going to be a really interesting spoon for me, really different. Yeah. And it looks yeah. good. And, you know, I, I think there's, there's scope for, you know, I wouldn't leave that dolphin hump quite as humpy, but I think there's scope for an awful lot of, you know, variation within the, within the form. Yeah. So yeah, I think I'll probably leave this one that humpy because I've come to like it and I'll try the next one yeah. less humpy. Okay. Since I know I'm doing, I'm doing at least two more of these. Yes, you've done the blanks. <laughs> Super. Well, thanks for sticking with it. Thank you so much, Rachel. And thank you, Kevin, for, for going along with it. I think this is a fantastic amount of information and really wonderful to see the whole process. <laughs> all right, I am going to stop the recording now. Thank you okay. all so much. <laughs>